Hey guys, welcome back to part three. So in this part, I'm going to break down the third Rizzuto. I'm going to explain what I'm going to do to it. And, um, well, so forth. So, let's begin. In the first and second video, I told you guys I had all the parts to fix this Rizzuto, which is mainly true. The thing was that the actual knife is a flared uh, scale versus a pinned scale. And again, just in case you guys don't know and haven't seen the first and second video first, these are pins. And then the flares are right, right there. So those are flares, or at least that's what I call flares. Uh, they are under clips that hold the handle onto the to the liners. So the pins are a hell of a lot easier to work with, but okay, no big deal. So my first intention was um, I'm going to put the pin scales that I have right here. The original ones. So I'm going to put those on this uh, Rizzuto. But I, I thought about it long and hard. I don't want to drill more holes into the into the liners. So I'm going to leave it the way it came out of the factory. That being said, am I going to reuse the broken scales that are original to that? Well, look how broken they are. Yes, I can, for the most part, fix it. It wouldn't be a great fix. You'll see where I added the extra plastic to it. So I'm not going to go down that route. What I am going to do is, I told you in the second video that I was playing with the idea if I were to uh, custom make scales for this Rizzuto. And the simple uh, answer is yes, I'm going to custom make scales for this Rizzuto. The scales material that I picked are um, basically I was thinking, do I make it out of stag horn, buffalo horn, bones? abalone, mother of pearl, uh, what, what are other ones, um, like flux, um, all this, all this awesome, awesome material to actually make. I decided not to add anything else, um, like, uh, what is it, um, like G10, or flux or anything like this I was very very close in adding abalone like as in um, like an oyster shell type color colorful type stuff like this anyway um, I decided no it came out of the factory with a, a acrylic like a um, an ivory type color as you see here so I wanted to keep that original look best as I can do. So what I ended up doing was I bought buffalo bone. So this is bone. So these are blanks as in it's a uh, five inch by, I guess, inch and a half. And um, I'm going to have to cut it up, shape it, uh, drill tiny little holes for the flares to clip onto the bone to keep it on the liners. I'm going to have to drill so that this pin can stay on. And... Um, I mean, perfect. I'm going to polish it. I'm going to sand it. It's going to look 
it's going to look amazing. The reason, or the how I know, <laughs> is because originally I had bone on this particular knife. And it was awesome. But, like I tell you guys in the other video that I made of this particular knife, and this one here, my girlfriend called it uh, the, uh, the knifelin. So the reason was because the damn point would never freaking stay inside the handle. It was always peeking out all the damn time. This was like the fifth, I'm sorry, the sixth or seventh try. And look at that. Now it does stay uh, inside. You can see that. Come on this side, you can see that right here. So, yeah, this would be a better angle so that you can see that it's not peaking or it's not about to peak. You can see that it's very, it's centered and it's in there. So it's perfect. So, again, fires amazing and locks up just as well. So, as I was doing this all the time, trying to make this... Uh, uh, basically the handle work like this eventually I broke <laughs> the bone that was here so I had to replace it with the aluminum and then uh, I did this a few times with the aluminum and that's where you see all the all the scratches and um, hammer marks machine marks until I finally got the damn thing to actually work the way I wanted it to. So, now it works. Now it's perfect. Or at least pretty damn perfect. Again, you can see that right there. Very, very nice. So, there you go. As for this one... It needs to be tightened up a little bit, and I was not going to tighten it up and say, oh, you know, I've been firing it like, uh, I don't know. I must have done about 200 plus, like open in and close, open, close, open, close. Within that time, like I tell you, I'm not going to lie to you guys. So right now, you can see that is just about to peak or not about to it is just peaking right there all that is again is this pin is getting loose so i just need to hammer it a hair to keep that from popping out that way but it works amazing it's beautiful i love it and again just because it peaks a little bit Again, I can just hammer that right there, and it'll stop that. And again, perfect. As for the third one, we're going to disassemble it so that you can see everything I have done. Uh, from the work that I was doing, uh, the, let's see, the second video I did was two hours into it. Right now, I'm at five, give or take. So five, six, seven, about seven hours into this, uh, making the, the pins straight. As you saw, this one was, like on this side, was folded in because it didn't have the bolster there. I had to pull that out. I had to take this pin off. I had to straighten this pin because it was all crooked. Uh, this one was really bent. I thought I was going to break it to straighten it up, but it's fine. And this one, uh, I just needed to fix it a little bit better. But let's, first off, let me pick it up and close it. I want to show you, let's see, here's this bolster, here's this one here. Okay, now let's see, where can I, I'm going to have to come way over here. <laughs> 
Okay. So there you go. It works. I mean, it worked before, but it was not this good, <laughs> this well. Okay. So now it's very good. It's straight and all that. So let's take it apart. So there's the first bolster, second bolster. Okay. Let's pull this pin that's holding the blade onto the onto the handle here. There's the blade. There's the pin. And on the second video, I believe I was trying to take apart the knife and I couldn't do it. <clears throat> this time I have my pliers. <laughs> this way, we will take the pins out. So there's that pin there. <clears throat> and then the last pin, let's see. Here's the bolster, uh, what is it, the bale, the other pin, bottom bolster, other one, okay, here's the back, okay, so let's line it up, and this is just to show you guys that when I talk about, um, oh yeah, I work on knives, or I custom, you know, I custom make knives and all this, it's not like uh, I take it to somebody and they do it for me. No, I do it myself. So. Okay, so there you go. There's all the pieces and all the parts. So the liners were also bent and twisted a little bit. I had to straighten them out. The spine, which is this part here, was rusted. And so was the spring. It was covered in rust. You saw it in the first part. Um, let's see. It was missing the, the bolster, which I have the extra part there. Here's the bale, which is in very good condition okay uh, all the pins like I tell you right here I straightened those out had to use a a uh, an anvil and a hammer just to straighten them out so they're all straight Okay, and uh, like I tell you, the liners also I had to straighten those out. So let's look at this way. This one was all twisted. Now it's a lot, a lot better. Okay, let's look at this one. This one's a little bit only because of the the spring right here, but. It's mostly straightened out, if not very well straightened out. Again, this one did have a big uh, bend. It had a uh, bow to it, but it's a lot better. So there's that. Cleaned up the rust on, the, on this little spring there as well. Okay, let's look at the spine here. You can see the back is a little it's polished it's not a mirror shine but it is better than the way that we got it you can see the inside here was covered in rust this little crevice right here was covered in rust so that's all gone all cleaned up here's the spring also covered in rust and now is gorgeous like brand new probably better than brand new <laughs> okay and then the blade itself so 
As for this, I decided not to take off all the scratches. I'm going to leave uh, the deeper ones in there. Only because, again, this is from the 50s, 60s. And I do like to have it look its age, as in not completely mint condition, put in a drawer and forgotten, but uh, actually used. And look, it's still around with a little TLC, of course. I just love to look at that name right there. So, that's about it for this video right here. Your catch up, uh, the third catch up video to see my progress of what I'm going to do. My journey of making this particular uh, risotto. So there's all the parts that I'm going to need to put this back together and it's going to be awesome. I hope you guys do like the bone. Um, again, I chose the bone to keep it as uh, the original, the ivory type color and now it's going to be worth even more because again it has actual bone, not acrylic. So. It's just something that I like. I'm not doing this to resell it or anything stupid like that. So if anybody's like out there says, well, you know, it's not going to be as worth as much because it does not have the original acrylic or bake light. Um, what is it? Scales. Eh, don't matter. It has actual bone on it. That's pretty damn badass in my opinion. So that's about it guys, just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, as well, I was also thinking about custom doing the, the swing guard. But I'm also going to leave the originals on there. So all I'm going, all I'm going to do is just put the bone on the handle, put it all back together. And there you go, it's working 100%. So, alright guys, see you in part 4. And uh, probably when the scales are all uh, readied and they're already all the, um, basically, shaped. And to be permanently put on the handle there. So... 18 minutes. Holy shit. I talk way too much. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.